Have you ever wondered what the best performing teams are at the moment? Well, after a helpful post of a union member that outlined the top suggested teams for this current union raid, I started to notice some trends and patterns regarding what the best teams are, and I kind of want to talk about it. So in Nikkei, the meta matters a bit more than select other gacha games. This is more apparent in the competitive elements like raids. Over the first year, while DPSs have sort of evolved to suit the needs of elemental weaknesses, supports have more or less stayed the same, with only small changes here and there. In this discussion video, I'm gonna go over what are some of the best teams are at the time of this video's release, and why they are so effective. My name is Psyche, and let's get started. First, I want to go over the importance of supporting characters. I've gotten some requests to cover characters like Leader, the Bunnies, and so on. The thing is, even if I did make guides on them, it wouldn't be very long. The role of supports have always just been, put them in your team, then forget about them. You're mainly using them to buff your allies, so they're relatively low maintenance. The only thing I would go over are skill leveling priorities, but those can usually be found online. You may have noticed I didn't make a guide on Leona, and probably none for Moran too. And this is mainly because I don't see them adding a lot to the table. The problem is that, from a gameplay perspective, they're not that strong. If you take a look at Leona's kit, there's some quirky buffs for shotguns, but the issue is that it's not doing enough. The thing is, CDR, or cooldown reduction, is just way too powerful of a buff to be missing out on in a team. Units like Leader, the Bunnies, the Schoolgirls are kinda hard to pass up when they exist, and this is gonna be a lot more apparent when we review the teams. Why only buff the accuracy of the amount of pellets of shotguns instead of just having one huge attack up that matters for everyone. This has been a thing for some other gacha games too, where they make a few units too powerful that any units that don't overpower them will just get second priority since you're just using worse versions of what already exists. One way they can design supports is to make them really good at a specific thing, kinda like what they did with Summer Mary. I'm sure as more characters are introduced, more of these niche supports will get more spotlight. But for the time being, people tend to stick to teams that have performed well. If you want an example of this, go to any late game campaign level, and take a look at what other people were using to clear it. A lot of the times, I can guarantee you'll start to see the exact same characters show up again and again. But what about DPSs? Well, the only realistic thing that has changed over the past year is that DPSs have started to become more specialized in the elemental damage that they deal. We started to see water code and electrical units start to fill in the gaps, and with Edgy Scarlet completing the hexagon as the sole win code DPS. The number of good units have increased, which is actually a plus, since there's now more chances to get a solid DPS for newer players. Now, let's go over what teams were covered in the union notes. Just know that these teams are tailored for the current Union raid, so only bosses, as well as assuming you have some kind of investment in any of the teams. But this should also provide a good baseline of what the strongest teams are in the game currently. So these screenshots provide 6 possible teams for the various 5 bosses. We start with Obelisk, with a weak element of fire. Pulling up the chart here, you can already see some similarities with the cops. And don't worry, you'll start to get used to seeing the same characters over and over as we continue. You can see that Alice is in all but one of the suggested team comps, given that she is a premier fire DPS for bosses. We also have the bunnies slash Tiga as a support core. Leader, volume, as well as novel for the independent supports. And then you have your fair share of flex and sub DPS units like Maxwell and Pravati. The on one out here is the 2B team. You can see that this team runs vastly different characters than the others, and this is something I really appreciate about certain character designs. If you go all the way back to my 2B guide, which I believe is one of the first videos I made, I mentioned that she is a very unique in the sense that she has the defender class and scales off HP in order to convert to attack. Since you don't actually want as much attack buffs versus other DPSs as the stat gets bloated, you can get away with characters that's different from what meta teams usually expect and still get some good results out of it, as you can see from my own example here. It's a shame 2B is limited and may not get a rerun, but I just want to say that I appreciate designs like this as it allows more characters in the game roster to shine. Next up is Doctor with a weak element of electric. Since I found this boss tends to not warrant a healer too much, you can see the setups here are a bit more offensive, favoring Dorothy instead of Leader. The top purple DPSs, Scarlet and Summer Annie's, are sweeping the lineups here, with Scarlet being in 5 out of 6 comps and Summer Annie's being in 4. Another underrated unit is Guillotine, who has a self-harm effect, 
which does require a healer to compensate. We even see Marciana peeking out from one of the lineups. As it turns out, when there's a need for an independent type 2 healer, she is currently the only option. Again, Privati is paired here with Dorothy and Samaranis for the faster CDR and other effects. Third boss is Harvester with a weak element of water. Something you can spot right away from the six teams is that X Lumilla is in all of them. Apart from Dorothy, she is the only solid water DPS right now, and when you gotta squeeze out every ounce of damage, you can't go wrong with the Snow Queen. Once again, the same course with Leader, Bunnies, Tiga, Volume, and so on. I also don't believe Harvester has a core that you can hit, so I don't think the schoolgirls work well here versus the another boss. Hence why I think they only appear twice on this list. Of course, you can always deviate a little bit from what's listed. In my run, I used Rapunzel as a healer, and I did manage to get one use out of her resurrection skill. Fourth boss is uh, called Fingers, with a weak element of wind. So I'm just gonna spoil it here, but the last boss is also weak to wind. So for this Union Raid, there is no boss that's weak to iron. And before I cover the six suggested teams, I just want to clarify again that these teams are tailored to the bosses, not a definitive list of the best teams. If there was a boss weak to iron, you bet we'd be seeing a lot more Red Hoods, Maxwells, and Snow Whites. So for fingers, you can see that Edgy Scarlet is working overtime yet again, being in five out of the six teams. The bunnies are also insanely good here as they're both wind code and has a lot of synergy with other Scarlet here. We also have the usual suspects of Alice's and Maxwell's. And since there is a severe lack of wind code DPS's, we even see Guilty tagging along from under the shadows. I didn't make a liberation guide, but I would say Guilty is the best choice if you want a strong type 2 DPS to prioritize. This is another fairly straightforward boss with no special gimmicks which is probably why it's not very memorable when it showed up for the first time in Chapter 25. Lastly, we have Modernia. Again, weak element of wind. Scarlet putting in the work one more time, but the main thing about this fight is to get rid of Modernia's core right away to avoid a team wipe. You can see units like Maxwell here to get in that burst damage. Healing is also needed but not required to recover from those turret attacks. So again, the Bunnies and Tiga are here as the dominant support course. The real interesting team is the one on the bottom right, with X Mika, Novel, and Dala for the support core. This one kind of baffled me when I first saw it, so I asked around. And it turns out that since as long as you delete the core quickly, you won't have to worry too much about dying. X Mika has a similar leader attack up buff, and also stacks a damage taken down buff. When it's fully stacked, you're able to negate damage so that you don't get wiped out before the timer is up, so there's no need to run a healer here. This team is of course a bit of an oddball, and only assumes you're running it after you've used up the bunnies, leader, and Tiga. Guess you learn something new every day. Alright, so let's conclude. From the list that I've shown, you can see that there is a general trend of which units are being used. Aside from the DPSs being specialized for their element, you can see that supports on the other hand are used more universally, which is why I would generally consider them as better picks if you still have the SSR selector or something similar. Something else you may have noticed is that every single feature team has a CDR unit. This is either Leader, Volume, Dorothy, and Dala. Again, it just reinforces how powerful a buff cooldown reduction is. The main goal I wanted to make in this video is to let people be aware of just how universally used the top meta units are in the game. And if you're still new, hopefully I would have also demonstrated how the general comps for a meta teams would go. Let me know if you enjoyed this quick look at the best teams in the game as of January 2024. I'm probably not doing a guide for Moran as she's coming out in a couple days, as I feel she's more PvP focused. But I do have other video ideas that I'm currently working on as we approach February. As always, thank you for watching, and have fun with the game.